let's cover some of the, the methods. I won't go through all of them because a lot of them have a really more antiquated designs. I think that the most widely used is right here across the line. Self-explanatory, <clears throat> whether you have 208 volt, 460, 480, that motor, the three motor leads you're seeing are going to get full voltage across each of the three phases of that motor. And typically your full load amperage, the inrush that you'll see is six times full load amperage for that particular motor. Again, that's an across the line itself. It's probably one of the most widely used in the industry. Part winding, um, you know, the only time we get into part winding is really replacements. Um, I, I don't go out and promote them for, for new um, installs, it really, we'll get, we'll touch base on that uh, in a little bit. Auto transformer. Auto transformer has been around, it's been steady Eddie for decades and decades and decades, well before my time. And, and really it is, a, it's a hunk of iron, it's a transformer that typically pulls off taps at 65% voltage. It's reduced voltage probably three and a half, four times full load amperage you'll see on the inrush. It does a great job. It really is something that doesn't break down. Uh, it emits, it emits, uh, emits heat in the wintertime, keeps your controller warm, obviously. But that technology has predominantly been used uh, uh, quite a bit through the U.S., but really in Canada. <clears throat> but that business is really, the last five years, are, are trending towards soft starts. So there's nothing against this, but there, there's a lot of reasons why you don't want it to. But that's been an icon in the industry for a long time. And, and look, at it's a three-wire device, too. So it, it takes a standard motor. <clears throat> Soft start. That has been around for a long time. I mean, a long time. Soft starts, electronic equipment, tended to be very, very sensitive to temperature and vibration. But through decades of improvement, whether it be any type of electronic equipment, but primarily into starting motors, uh, it's improved. So it's become very efficient. There's some flexibility there. Worst case, if you ever need to tweak it, you do have a few adjustments. Uh, and that's a rare case that you might have to, but sometimes it can correct minor inefficiencies in a, in a design of a system. And again, it takes three wires. This is quite nice. Primary resistor, again, if we're replacing it, I think I would suggest looking at another replacement for it. Um, you know, maybe a GPS probably would be good, uh, but if we had to build it, we probably could. But the point is, it's really older technology that's been around for a long time and it's been displaced. The last two, Y Delta closed. We get a lot of demand for that still <clears throat> and Y Delta open. I'll show you briefly what those mean on future slides here. But again, you notice there are six, six wires. And on new applications, again, I always say, hey, three wire application, use, a, use an across the line, use a soft start reduced voltage rather than a, a Y Delta open or close because it takes six wires. It's twice as much labor, twice as much material to connect it and again you're looking at a trade-off now between uh, a Y Delta open or close controller compared to a soft start or even um, again for reduced voltage I would really push a soft start because it has a lot more flexibility and there's less potential uh, how do I want to put it moving parts that could that could wear out down the road the big thing here as you'll note Three wire, three wire, three wire, six and six. Um, typically, again, when you get into this type of a design, reduced voltage is always trying to reduce the current inrush in an electrical system. High inrushes in an electrical system cause, cause adverse effects to the electrical system. It could actually induce noise and spikes back through the system, which could affect other electronic equipment within. Talk about uh, critical production areas, hospitals, radio stations. I mean, different things where you could have that noise impact on the electrical system itself. So let, here we are, cross the line. Full voltage, it's quite easy. Contactor opens and closes. Here's your three lines coming in. And again, T1, 2, and 3 to your motor leads right here. It's very simple, very simple design. 
internal components, pretty easy, come in the top, loop up, loop up into the isolation switch here. It loops around through the magnetic breaker only, down through the current transformers, which are sensing the amperage draw of the motor to the contactor right here. And this contactor is the workhorse. So I mentioned before, it's quite easy to size an electric fire pump controller. All we need as a manufacturer is the horsepower and the voltage. And all the work and calculations of all the components within this enclosure are done by us. I need the HP and I need the full load or the HP and the voltage. Now on higher horsepowers, we might get into the fringe area where we might say, hey, we need to see the motor data sheet because we want to see what the amperage draw is. Again, this is uh, typically, you're talking uh, direct online, you know, six times full load amperage, you're talking, oh, medium to small to medium horsepower motors, um, 40 volt, it'd be typical. People ask, where's the tipping point? Well, you might be looking at a 75 horsepower, 40 volt motor, for all I know. You know, typically you could use an across the line with no problem, but it's the application you need to look at. What will be affected in the facility this is going to start into? When you get into, you know, 100 horsepower, 125 at 40 volt or bigger, it seems that it's, it's a no-brainer that you are going to use a reduced voltage controller. And if it's a 208 volt, you're literally doub doubling the full load amperage. And in most cases, the current carrying components will double in size too. Um, definitely want to start looking at using a reduced voltage on a lower horsepower motor if you're if you're actually attached to 208 volt. Here's the curve. All right, look at the inrush here. We got an inrush right here, roughly six times full, full load amperage. You do have a incremental peak in rush. It's almost negligible. It happens so fast. <clears throat> Excuse me. But as your as your RPM increases here toward full RPM, whether it's 1750 or 3700 30, or whatever it might be, as you increase your speed, you notice the amperage it goes down. And so here's the optimum spot right here. We're at full speed and full load running amperage. That's the optimum level of the motor. Reduced voltage part winding I'm not going to get into. Auto transformer, very brief. Again, we have a couple sets of contactors. We have taps off this transformer right here typically 65%, there could be other, other adjustments factory set, but 65 is industry standard. Um, and again, we're starting off at a reduced voltage, which is gonna reduce current. And then as we ramp up, what will happen is, uh, as you'll see briefly here, we have an inrush close to peaking three to four times full load amperage. Again, this, this high inrush here is almost negligible the peak and rush, but as you see, as, as speed increases here, the RPM amperage drops down. We do have a slight peak right here because what happens is the speed goes up. We're transitioning from 65% to full voltage, and so we'll pick a little spike up there that's very minimal, but it really is a nice transition. So auto transformer has been used for a lot of years. Again, it, it's been a steady eddy in the industry for a while, but it's being displaced by soft starts. Oh, soft start, here we are. This is that little black box I'm talking about. Again, it, don't, just don't get um, confused thinking a soft start is like a VFD, a variable frequency drive, because it is, it is alike because they're both electronic, but there is differences. So a soft start will allow you to ramp up the amount, uh, your motor up to a certain speed. Now we all know on normal power by code, you need to have your motor up and running in 10 seconds or less. That's the maximum amount by code. So a soft start will allow you to do two things. You could ramp that speed up a little quicker if you want, or you could, you know, it's field, adjust field adjustable, but it's factory set for the optimum ramp up time for that particular horsepower size motor. You could ramp down and have a, a slow ramp down in cases of that too. I mean, you can go both ways. 
really you don't have to adjust that in the field. But once a soft start ramps up, it gets up to 100% motor speed. Now you're at optimum full load amperage, running amperage itself. Where a variable frequency drive, it's sensing the system pressure and trying to maintain kind of like a flat curve. You want to maintain that pressure and at the same time, it will vary the frequency of the motor. So the motor speeds up, slows down over a period of time. It, it, it's, there's nothing constant about it. It's sensitive to the system pressure itself. So rather than ramp up and go to full speed like a soft start, a variable frequency drive may ramp up for just a brief second to full speed, but ramp back down, trying to maintain the system pressure that was set in it. So your motor might run quite slow over a period of time. Again, soft start economically, it's been the go-to for a lot of years. There's a lot of cities anywhere in the country um, that have standardized on this. The engineering community has grasped it because it's it runs efficient, runs cooler. There's, there's really no moving parts. Cost has gone down considerably. So before you look at a replacement, again, look at what the cost of using a soft start as a replacement might be. And if it's a 12 lead motor, it's, it's quite easy to tie in your leads and, and feed three into the, the control or the um, controller itself. You can tell I like soft starts, obviously. <laughs> it's quite easy. Again, you come in, you come in the bottom, loop into the top here, same thing. We have a soft start. We're going through the soft start, we ramp up, and here's our contactor for full running speed. Ramp up is nice. Obviously, you see the inrush here, it's set, it shows two, so let's be realistic, probably two, two and a half, three, maybe slightly higher. It is adjustable, but again, if you reduce that curve too much, you need to have enough so the enough inertia for that motor to turn and, and break free and turn. So anytime you reduce or make adjustments, um, you have that risk. They're factory set based on the horsepower, optimum running. Uh, again, if you needed to tweak it, you probably could, obviously, special situations. Um, but as you see, the inrush is, is a lot less. And as you gain speed here across the horizontal plane, current levels off and there is no spike. It's just a nice soft curve dropping down to your optimum full load amperage running at the, the um, RPM that it's set for. I'll move a little quicker here. Why Delta closed? Here's your resistors. Very simple. What we do, is we have reduced voltage and it's running through a set of resistors which re reduces the voltage as you see in to the motor itself and then we transition um, primarily what happens with the resistors again they stay in the circuit and we it, it's called a closed transition so the motor leads never ever ever have an open circuit an open voltage, or I should say no voltage. What's happening is those resistors stay there, so there's a constant voltage that's applied to the uh, lead to the motor itself, close transition, obviously. And the reason why, I'll, I'll show you the next uh, slide that'll explain that. By having a closed transition, you see we could look at two, two and a half, maybe a little three, we have Again, peak in rush, which is negligible, but this is very, very nice in rush uh, on startup. And as you increase to about 85 to 90% speed, you see there's a little blip here. That's going from reduced voltage to full voltage. And by having those resistors in line, we continually have voltage across the motor leads 100% of the time. That's crucial. That's the closed transition. And I'll show you the, the reason why on open. I'm going to back up here just to show you a picture. Here's your resistors right here. Again, why do I say soft start? Uh, these are resistors. They can heat up. They can cool down over a period of time. They, they can wear out. These, the the um, 
material itself that's used for the resistors can lose uh, tensile strength. It could it could fail. Uh, there's a lot of different reasons why you know things could fall on top of them. Soft start doesn't have that situation. It's it's non-moving parts. It's not something you need to worry about as much. Okay, why delta open? See the resistors are gone. That's key. What does that mean to me? Obviously, resistors gone here. But here we go. The inrush is very comfortable. Could be two, two and a half times. As your speed increases to about 85 to 90 percent RPM, you notice what happens. Your current drops, and we go from reduced voltage to full voltage. Well, without having those resistors there, we remove the voltage from the leads of the motor, so it sees an open circuit. And then all of a sudden, we put full voltage across those leads, and look what happens. It spikes five plus times, almost as high as an across the line controller, because we remove voltage from it, we put voltage, full voltage back on the leads, it's starting, it's almost like a fresh start, even though there's some momentum there with it turning, but the increase is dramatic. So, I mean, I, I don't really care for wide delta open, obviously, because that affects the system. 